You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities, and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. At dollarseed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. dollarseed.com. What could be healthier? What's up? What's up? What's going on, guys? Welcome to another incredible episode of Vigilantes Radio Live right here on iHeart's Radio. And I'm your host, Dini. We have uh, some special guests for you guys. So you definitely want to stick around for that. And as a matter of fact, text your buddies or your family members or even share it on social media right now and let them know that we are about to dive deep into another interview. All right. Our interviews are designed to go beyond music, news, books, art, acting, films, technology, education, entrepreneurship, entertainment, and sometimes even past that thing that we call the ego. Our interviews are designed to go behind the scenes and into the minds of these incredible human beings. You know, the ones who are out there giving it their all for me, for you, and for the world. Have you struggled budgeting your finances? Don't worry, you're not alone. HumbledBudget.com, that's H-U-M-B-L-E-D-B-U-D-G-E-T.com is the help and resource you've been searching for. HumbledBudget.com is a personal finance and educational website with a great variety of topics when it comes to budgeting, taxes, investing, and the popular topic of FIRE, financial independence, retire early. HumbledBudget.com has a goal, and that's to help you reach your financial dreams no matter what your goals are when it comes to finances it doesn't matter where you start where you come from or where you are right now humbledbudget.com can help what are you waiting for take that first step to the financial life you've dreamed of and go to humbledbudget.com that's h-u-m-b-l-e-d-b-u-d-g-e-t humbledbudget.com all right, again, welcome to the show. Welcome to an enlightening conversation with Joey Flores and uh, Mark B. Joey Flores is a brilliant writer who has dived into the depths of psychology and emerged with captivating stories that touch the human soul. So today we will explore the intersection of psychology and storytelling, you know, and find out what we can find. For right now, let's go ahead and welcome them to the show Joey and Mark B. Welcome. Yo, yo, what's up? That's Mark Battles. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely, man. Mr. Flores, what's going on? Yes, it's a pleasure to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, just to kick things off, just, you know, warm things up a little bit. um, How can the study of psychology enhance our understanding of human experience and shape the narratives that we create? So psychology in general is the study of the human mind and behavior, but it also helps us understand, uh, you know, everyday decisions that we make, our lifestyles and such, and it helps us uh, improve our decision making as well. So that helps us reduce the likelihood of experiencing, you know, bad mental health. Absolutely. So I, I don't think I'm the only one who who's noticed things happening within the hip-hop community. 
we'll, we'll talk about some of that tonight, especially with uh, some written articles. Uh, we have one from Billboard, which was written by Laura Sprattle in November of 2022. Um, but Chuck D speaks out against gun violence, you know, emphasizing that it's not a normal behavior. Uh, I totally agree with that. I'm raising sons and daughters, and um, the things I see now as a parent versus when I was a teenager are kind of like, okay, now I see what my dad was talking about, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think I think it's a little it, it morphed for some reason between the millennium and and now it's it's morphed into something else. Um, so, what are your right. thoughts on the like normalization of gun crime in popular culture and its impact on our society? So obviously Chuck D is a very very popular um, figure in hip hop music. He's not just very famous from being part of Public Enemy. He's also very famous as as a standalone artist. So he's actually voiced a lot of opinions regarding gun crime. But this particular article from Billboard that you're referring to, this one pertains to Takeoff, which is uh, one of the artists from from Migos and. Mark actually, um, he's managed currently by Coach K, which is Kevin Lee. He's actually the, the manager and record label executive that is currently associated with Migos. I think Mark likely would have like more insight into the situation regarding what happened with Takeoff. Migos is currently signed to Quality Control Music, right? With Coach Correct. K? Yeah. Is that right? 100%. Yeah, so, and that was, uh, they were the first group the quality control so um they did a lot of the grassroots work with coach and with p the two owners of the label and um honestly you know like speaking on takeoff or speaking on a lot of these rappers that have been victims you know to gun crimes lately i feel like a lot of it like a lot of our kids coming up are desensitized to it because of the music because of the glorification of, you know, certain aspects of this lifestyle. And being somebody that, that grew up in what's glorified, you know, the, like my background is right on par with a lot of the things that get talked about. But I decided as an artist to never glorify that that part of it because when you when you make it seem like it's it's all glitz and glamour and it's fun and it's a, it's an exciting way to live. Like, you sending the wrong message. And honestly, like, growing up the way that I grew up, like, that part of it was never fun. And that's the part that's confusing to me. Like, they think because we grow up a certain way that we not scared, too. I remember living down the street from a killer, and everybody in the neighborhood knew he was a killer. And I'm 12, 13 years old. I'm scared of the killer, too. You know what I mean? Like, we, like we, we not here just all living in harmony and it's like to go outside knowing 12 13 14 years old you can't go down the street without having your friends with you or your big bro or your cousin with you and feel comfortable like i remember being that kid on my block feeling nervous about going up to burger king by myself and i didn't live in fear at the time i didn't it didn't feel like fear it just felt like this is life this is just the norm but then once you grow and, you, and, and you're and you out of that and you think about what it felt like to be in it, it's always been kind of confusing to me when I hear artists glorify it the way they do. Because as somebody that experienced it firsthand, it's just like, ah, it didn't feel like that. It didn't feel exciting. It didn't feel fun. You know what I mean? I remember one time I was with a group of my friends. It, it was five or six of us. And uh, one of my friends made a comment. He was like, Mark, it's, it's five or six people. I can't remember the number, but it's five or six of us in a circle right now. You're the only person in this crew that ain't been shot. And I thought about that like, wow. You know, it, I was I was with a group of guys as my friends my whole life. And I was the only person in our group that had never been shot. That's the reality of what we're growing up in. That's the reality of what we experience. But once you put a beat on and we start talking about it and make it sound fun and make it sound exciting make it sound like it's an action movie or something like that i think that's what makes people start to look at it like it's not real life or like the artists aren't real people you know and 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 looking back at pictures i got a picture in my room right now of six of my friends and i'm in the picture with six people i grew up with 
and all of them is dead. I'm the only person still living. That's the reality yeah. of this gun violence, you know? So I guess I look at it differently than a lot of artists, and, and I know they're looking for a way out. A, a lot of fans gravitate to that type of music, but it kind of make me emotional thinking about it, man, because it's not as fun as they make it seem. All right, for sure. No, and, and Mark, um, for the listeners who may not know who you are, can you just give a little bit of details on who you are? Okay, yeah. My name is Mark Battles. You know, I've been doing this underground thing for a minute. I own my own label, which is uh, called the Bossy Family. But like you said, I'm managed by Coach K, Quality Control. So that's my family over there, too. And I've been doing my thing for a while, touring, you know, um, putting out my own music, getting on the road, building my own fan. So, yeah, you know, but I, my music is, is, I guess, is a little more on the conscious side. I wouldn't say I'm like a a common or, you know, like a Talib Kweli or nothing like that, but I definitely speak on a lot of the things that um, the Billboard article touched on. I speak on a lot of the things that the Source article touched on, so this is right up my alley. But going back to what we were talking about regarding the Billboard article with Chuck D, so yeah. to be honest, the gun violence is a very serious problem. Right. It's a very, very serious problem, but the thing is that in the hip hop culture, it's normalized now. Yeah, it's glamorized, and it's how it is nowadays with hip hop music and rap music, it's not how it was before. Before, for example, um, back in like the 80s and 90s, when NWA, when Bone Thugs and Harmony, when they were first, you know, they were first emerging into like the hip hop industry, people weren't um, attracted to um, to the messages that they were putting out. So Bone Thugs and Harmony, they used to go by, um, I think, called Bone Enterprise. Is that right? And then I think it was that Easy e had them change the name to Bone Thugs and Harmony. Is that a rumor or is that? That's true. That's true? Well, around that time when uh, when NWA was being formed and Bone Thugs and Harmony, they were just coming out with the message about you know racial profiling and gun violence that was happening in the black communities. Obviously, they began to get very popular, and then from there, the whole gangster rap became super popular. And it took maybe like maybe one or two decades for it to become normalized. Now the kids nowadays they they think that this whole gun violence, that the whole thing is uh, is all cool, and they're, like they don't understand the reality of it. When I was a kid, I was probably like around nine or ten years old. I was introduced to Eminem, MC Juice. And um, around that time, I had a friend who I grew up with. He's actually one of the first people that introduced me to rap music. And I think he was like around 15 or 16 years old. He was walking up, coming out of like a a party about where I live. And he was shot two times in the head. They wanted to steal his gold chain. And that's the reason why they shot him two times. It was a big manhunt. That guy actually had fled to another state. But eventually they had caught into the guy and they arrested him. He's actually locked up right now. But mm. these type of situations, obviously with gun violence is common, but there's an issue there with the in the music industry. Okay. All right. So I have an important question. Is this a part of a social experiment? Because mm. for some reason, only the black rappers are dying from gun violence. Look, it looks like or it appears like it's actually a problem that stems from like the black community, but it actually is not though. So. There is, uh, you know, there's white people, Asian people, Indian people, obviously a lot of Hispanic people that are dying from gun violence. But obviously with, with black Americans, they're more susceptible to that. I read a study in 2019 from Frank Edwards from Rutgers University, and he found that police violence in terms of police, you know, trying to arrest or possibly even shoot black people when they're being confronted even if there is an actual cause for them to be um, confronted by the police or not, that police violence is the leading cause of death for young men aged 25 to 29 in the U.S. One in a thousand black American men are actually expected to be killed by police. That's actually from a research oh. study from the Rutgers University School of Criminal Justice. Yeah, but oh. more white people die from police violence than black people do. We're only 13% of the population. Yeah. No, I understand that, but... You have to be careful because with research studies and then when people publicize in the news, they tend to cherry pick. They tend to cherry pick data and they make it appear as if there's a more serious problem than there is. Obviously, since the white population is more, 
And because there isn't that much spotlight in like the white people committing crimes, in a way, yes, white people are actually getting shot more. They're actually committing more violence than black people. Oh, but the news only show a certain colored face. And that goes back to the music, that goes back to mental health. Um, Mark Battles, you were mentioned in an article in The Source that was written by Sean Grant. Um, right. About uh, certain artists being vocal about their past, addiction, struggles, mental health, things like that. Um, how far are we, are we getting with the message, Mark? Yeah. How far is it getting to, so, to the listener? Right. So, I love the fact that you brought that up. And I love the, the way that you um, induced that question because that question is what seems to never get answered, right? There's always discussions about it. We're always having dialogue and back and forth and, and everybody's stating their opinion. But we always miss the mark. Like, what is being done about it? And I always feel like the message gets lost in the conversation because the conversation always leads to other conversations, right? Because there's so many things that are being done right in front of our faces, blatantly done right in front of our faces. And, and it's like, we don't never focus enough energy on one thing because we're trying to fight the entire fight. And I think we got to break it down and we got to start somewhere, right? Because this conversation could lead to us talking about how many different things. Like, just, just think about it. Like, it's so much blatant. It's so many just like heinous things going on right in front of our faces that we have become accustomed to seeing that we have become desensitized like everything is just oh well another school shooting another mall shooting oh well another grocery store shooting oh well another deranged husband kills wife and family oh well right so it's like you can never really focus on one thing because you look left and you got this. You look right and you got this. And I think that's a part of the problem is because we're so exposed to, like, we're overexposed. Like, before the Internet, you just knew what was going on in your neighborhood or in your city, in your town. Now you know all of the problems in the world everywhere. So how do you actually start attacking those problems? when you feel like you're overwhelmed with everything that's going on, right? So then then we're just left with conversation. Well, we need to do this. We need to do that. So let's just reel it in, right? So if we want to talk about one specific thing and we, and we, want, to, we want to make some progress, unfortunately, we got to lead some of the fight for somebody else. And we got to start somewhere. So with us, when we talk about the black community, we talk about gun violence in the black community. We talk about people who, are, who have been victims of gun violence or who have had family members who have been victims of gun violence. We understand that other races have been victims of gun violence. We understand that other communities are suffering in, in alarming rates as well. But if we don't just focus on it somewhere and start somewhere, it'll just continue to be conversation. And for me, I think it's important for us to say, okay, as artists, I have a big influence. I go do a show. I'm speaking to 500, 700 people, depending on the night. And they're listening to every word, if they don't already know the words, to the song that I'm, I'm performing at the time. And anytime I say anything that may just be for fun, you know, it may just sound dope on the track, but it don't necessarily align with my beliefs, I always question myself. And the older I get, the more mature I get, the more my audience matures, the less I feel inclined to speak on things that don't align with me. And and that's where I try to cut slack to some of these artists because a lot of these dudes, they're not in their early 30s like I am. They're 22, 23 years old. And all they care about is getting themselves in a better position, getting their family in a better position. So if y'all want to hear me talk about killing people, y'all want to hear me talk about, you know, spinning the block, and that's what's going to get me the streams, I'm not thinking about the repercussions. 
but I'm also not recognizing how influential I am because I was just in my neighborhood a year ago, two years ago. I was just eating mayonnaise sandwiches a year ago, two years ago. So it's like, you're not thinking about the impact that you have on a 16, 17, 18 year old kid that's still in the, in the environment that you just escaped from. You just don't want to go back. So it's hard for them to feel like, oh, this is because of me. You know, because you're not thinking about that. All you're thinking about is I can put my family in a better situation. I can set us up for the future. I'm just going to say what they want me to say. If they wanted me to say something else, I would say it. But this is what they want to hear. It's unfortunate the influence that we have as artists because we don't necessarily get the freedom that people think we have. And I remember saying things at 24, 25, 26 years old that I would never say now. And I remember just loosely saying it because it sounded good on a song. And I wasn't always thinking about everything that I said. But the older you get, the more you pay attention to the, to the impact that you can have on people. So you, you kind of got to cut these guys slack when they're coming from the environments that they're coming from. They only know one way of life, right? But on the flip side of it, we have to start speaking about these things and we have to start making other things attractive, making other things sound cool. The only thing that sounds dope on the track is you talking about having an extendo or, you know what I mean? How many, like, you going to spin the block? Like, let's, let's find a way to make something else sound interesting. And as yeah. soon as the fans show that they're willing to, to be more open-minded, the artists will start talking about more. I know half of these dudes. I know 90% of these dudes. They solid guys. Like, these ain't a bunch of crazy, maniac, lunatic, loose cannons. Like, these are solid guys that spend 90% of their time in the studio or on a stage. They're not out here killing people. They just know that that's what the audience want to hear. And if, as the audience, these people start to show that they're willing to listen to more, when you got conscious artists speaking on certain things, press play on the song sometimes. But if we're, if we're never listening to that, you're going to continue to get what you've been getting because that's what's selling. That is one big issue, though, in the hip-hop industry and or just in music in general. So a famous rapper gets gunned down, right? The whole music industry and the fans and everything, they start mourning the death. They make a few statements, like, on social media or, you know, they talk to the media. And then they return to business as usual. And they begin, again, promoting content that glorifies black murder and trauma. The cycle just repeats again and again with every single uh, big scale murder that happens. There was actually um, an article that I uh, shared with Dini about Chance the Rapper. He's a Chicago rapper. I'm sure that you guys are familiar with Chance. That's my guy. He's yeah. probably one of the few artists that actually has, he's done a lot to try and combat the problem with gun violence because you know that in Chicago, it's a very serious problem. Um, right. Gun violence in Chicago is super bad. It's been bad for like the past 10 years. I know you guys probably know this, that Chicago um, got the nickname Chirac. Um, but Chaz is actually one of the few hip hop artists that's done a lot with the youth. We're trying to reduce gun violence, you know, trying to increase um, participation in school programs. He was doing a lot of campaigning with that during like latter part of the 2010. But look, the gun violence is probably one of the most important things, everything that we've discussed during our entire conversation. Yeah. And look, I have been a victim of gun violence, not directly, but indirectly. By what I mentioned right. in terms of me having a childhood friend who I grew up with, who was shot because he was carrying around a gold chain on his neck. Right. It fucks you up in the long term. Like immediately, the people who are affected by gun violence, they obviously they're going to cry and mourn and everything. And it's not really a big issue after some time. People forget about it and they go back to their normal life. But there's actually long-term psychological effects that happen. And people suffer for the rest of their lives. Absolutely. So going back to what Mark Battle said about uh, listener's preference. Yeah. Uh, so if we can change the listener's preference, we may have a chance. I don't believe that personally. I think that we're so far deep into this. I mean, the roots are, are there. Um, it's going to continue. 
and, and nothing's going to happen to someone that the world really, really cares about, you know, then we may have some type of uh, people come in and change something, but then it may be something that we don't agree with, um, like gun control or something like that. But yeah, with the listener's preference, uh, yeah. and all these artists like you, Kendrick Lamar, Vic Mensa, uh, Chance the Rapper, you know, shedding light, uh, what can we do even in the media world to help this because outside of mainstream media you know what they promote you know what they push it's always uh, some type of agenda and you know sometimes i don't think it's listener preference i think it's someone telling the listeners that they think they want to hear this kind of stuff Mm. because if if you really ask these artists like you said man we really want to talk about some things of substance you know yeah well but that doesn't sell Absolutely. And it's funny because I love the way that you introduce these topics, man. I'm just going to show you some love and respect right now because it's easy to stay on point with the way that you introduce these topics. But I think I think there's some validity to what you're saying, man. And I feel like I feel like it may be beyond hip hop media. It may be something else going on behind the scenes that is that is responsible for the energy that certain artists get and even when those artists make the decision to try to do something different nine times out of ten those songs don't get the same push and it's like it's like you only allowed to get one or two a year of those type of songs where I wouldn't say a positive song, but just a song with some substance. Like, a little baby, you know, he dropped his a couple years ago, and that went crazy, and now Dirt got his new one going out. But it's like, they only allow you one of those songs every couple years, right? And it just seems coincidental to me. It's like, these songs work so well. Like, why would it take Dirt this long to drop a song like that? And it's doing so well. It's probably going to be the biggest song he ever dropped. So it makes you think, it's like, hmm. So it can't just be the consumers. It has to be something else. Politics has a very, very big significant factor in in the music industry. Is that something that actually affects not just the artists, but the record labels and, you know, the execs and everything? So people in in Congress, um, people that are in politics, they closely watch, they closely observe, you know, all the big trends that are happening. And whenever there's something that either they don't like due to it being like political in nature. Right. What I was discussing in the beginning of the the conversation with when NWA and Easy when they were coming up in Compton, there was a lot of political conflict with them becoming mainstream. Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys saw the NWA movie that came out. They came out with like a movie like years ago. There was like a little bit of panic with NWA becoming mainstream because the not just their name, but uh, just their music in general. They've never had gangster rap as part of mainstream music before. And so it was something that they were scared of in like the whole culture. But after some time, People began to normalize the NWA music and everything like that. And eventually people just accepted that gun violence was part of black culture. And then they just began making money off of it, glamorizing it, and normalizing it, which is the issue that we're discussing now. That's because but it's still going on. It's still going on right now, though. That's the problem, though. Right. Black people think this is our culture. That, that's the thing, right. though. They have the false impression of not just black people in, like, in low-income communities. There is a very, very big problem with stigma because of the hip-hop industry. Well, not just black people, but Hispanic people, too. Because there's a lot of Hispanic people that, that had wrote off the popularity that the hip-hop industry had promoted. So it's not just a black issue. It's also a, an issue with Latino rappers. There is very few Asian rappers, too, but... It's a multicultural issue. All right. So, in closing, um, yeah, I just really want, want to know what can we do, um, especially on yeah. mental health and with more people coming forward with, hey, maybe I'm not okay, you know, maybe I'm dealing right. with a lot of pressure and I don't know how to translate it. I don't really know how to translate it through violence, maybe beating someone up or going off on someone in traffic. 
Um, I just think we need some hands-on help. <laughs> Best thing is to raise awareness of the problem, which is something that some hip-hop artists have done. But the problem is that with politics, there is a lot of partisanship. For example, in Chicago, the Democratic Party, they run the whole city of Chicago. And there is a lot of public corruption. I think it was 70s or 80s. They had arrested judges. They had arrested cops. They had arrested a bunch of people that were in public office for the very same crimes that they were prosecuting black people for and Hispanics. Mm. So yeah. politics is a very important factor, but they're also complicit in part of the issue as well. So it becomes mm. a very challenging. But I think from, from a media standpoint, from the standpoint of just me being a creative, and knowing that there's other creators out here that are recognizing the issues that we, we're speaking on right now, but they still love to create. They still love to be in media. They still love to make music. They still love to express themselves through the arts. I think what what Houdini is, 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 is asking is, what can we do? And what I think we can do is, I think we can... We can all agree that this is a problem that is internal, but is it's it's pushed externally. So internally, we're we're causing a lot of it's, it's almost self-inflicted in a sense. But there's an outside force that's fanning the flames, right? So. In order for us to really recognize what the true problem is, we got to take a step back and try to do things differently and then see if we're persuaded to go back in this direction. So if we, so I got a lot of homies, a lot of artists. I've been in this game a long time. I've done features with French Montana, I did an album with Tory Lane. So it's like Tory Lane is a great example of what he just dealt, dealt with. I did a collab album with Tory Lane. Like just any of these artists that, that you may think of that may come to mind when you think of more of a street artist or something like that. If you sit down and have a conversation with these guys with the cameras off when they're not in character, I'm not speaking on Tory or or French Montana specifically. I'm speaking on just just a lot of these artists in general just any rap artist that's that's current right now you sit down and have a conversation with a lot of these guys they got the biggest hearts in the world they give back to the community they buy t-shirts and and they and they buy coats for kids they're giving out turkeys and, and hams during thanksgiving they care about where they're from there's only a few artists hip-hop artists that that are not like that for example kodak he got a pardon from Donald Trump. He got a presidential pardon, right? And then after right. he got locked up again, I think it was for like a weapons charge. So there's people who value their life really well and they're not like how they're glamorizing music. But obviously right. that's just a few of them. Most of them are just like Mark said, they're not how they're portraying the music culture. They solid you know, guys. They're, they're good people, they're giving to their back to the community. They're trying to build up their communities, you know, they're trying to do what they can. So what I would suggest is from a media standpoint, from a from an artist standpoint, whoever we have influence over or the people that we have connections to, I just think we try things a different way. And the only way we can do that is we got to support the guys that are stepping out and willing to speak on certain things that aren't typically talked about and then when you got guys like the street guys like a dirt when he puts out a song like the song he just put out with j cole the media that doesn't typically cover a dirt the more conscious media the media that's not interested in some of the other things he talks about we got to get behind this song we got to celebrate this song we got to convince a dirt to do more music like this but if we if we focus on who got the most power and influence, then we then then we'll never get started, right? You don't start off with the most power and influence. All you all you can do is control what you can control. So if you got an audience, if you a podcaster, 
you got a blog that, that's getting a thousand, two thousand clicks a day. That's not major, right? But at the end of the day, if we if if we start there and we continue to grow, the and everybody is on the same page from an underground or or a mid major uh, standpoint, it'll start to make waves, right? You might not have the biggest voice, but you still got a voice. And I'm at the point where right now, with all the artists that I know, all the guys that I've worked with, all the guys that I got love and respect for, all the guys that got love and respect for me, like, they know what I'm on right now. And they respect what I'm on. And I got songs coming out this year with some of the biggest artists in the world. And and they doing songs that sound like me, with me. And if I can get an A-list artist to jump on a song, like the song that I'm going to drop a look in a couple of months, that's, that's really speaking on a lot of these things. If I can get them to do that and support me and co-sign me with a message like that, then I think we can all find a way to start at least moving in that direction. But if we keep just throwing our hands up, it's like, ah, right, no matter what we do, we don't got the biggest voice, mainstream media is going to drown us out, whatever, whatever, then we're going to be stuck in the same position. But we got to start somewhere. And like I said, I'm not perfect. Like, I'm not like some Christian rapper or nothing like that. I don't pretend to be perfect, but I do know one thing. Like, I lost a lot of friends growing up in the environment that I grew up in. I lost a lot of family members. My cousin, my nephew, two years ago, my nephew got murdered in my old neighborhood selling a phone on Facebook Marketplace, and they robbed him and killed him. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's people like me that just fed up with it. And no amount of money is worth me being a part of pushing a message that's destroying my community. It just ain't. And, and and eventually, if we continue to celebrate certain things like, you know, just music. I'm not saying the music has to be music that could be played at church. I'm just saying we got to stop pretending like it's, it, it sounds dope when you're talking about killing five people in one verse. Or, or 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 shooting up the crib. I don't care if your mama in the house and this and that. That's the stuff we celebrate. There was like a song that you came out with or a video about. I think it was about like gun violence or, or mental health. A little bit of both. Yeah, I guess you could say that. It was just about my life and, and what it felt like growing up in my neighborhood. You know, in a impoverished situation, growing up in a in an environment where you had to fight every day. You had to look over your shoulder. So, you know, I try to speak on these things. And, and I've touched hundreds of thousands and millions of people with my message. But, I mean, like you said, it, it doesn't get glamorized. It doesn't get championed like some of the other stuff does. And until that happens, there's only so much you can do as far as an artist, you know, making certain songs. It's going to take more than just that. And uh, okay. before we before we let you guys go, I do want to say this. Uh, as I was listening to the conversation, uh, most of the time it's like, you know, most conversations aren't solution based. Uh, but just listening to you two gentlemen, I think once we control the flow of the money, like let's say right. work battle battles go on a campaign for a new album and it's promoting a healthy lifestyle, you know, check your mental health, check your well being spread love i believe once those dollars are redistributed to someone like this the listeners will follow because they're they're yeah. promoting a certain lifestyle they're promoting a certain image and that's where that's what they're pumping all the money into all the ads yeah. they're promoting it they're promoting it they're spending the money so if we control where that money is going and redirect it to something more positive we can have mm. some type of chance for some type of change mm. that's real that's real. They do it all Absolutely. day. Ford did it with their their campaign. Uh, right. But like, just did it. Try just try to change the conversation. <laughs> yeah. Money, money is yep. what you need to do it. Absolutely. All right, all right. Mark Battles. Where can people connect with you online? Um, everywhere. Um, you can find me on all social, all socials at Mark Battles three one seven. That's Mark Battles. 
Mark with a K, 317. Come tap in with me. I mean, I got a lot of music dropping right now. Um, I'm working on a new album. I just put out a mixtape in March called Paramount. I'm working on my new album right now. Got a lot of big features, real big A-list names that'll be on that album, man. I'm excited about this year, but, but I mean, this is a fight that I'm going to continue to fight. So I love talking about this. I haven't done a lot of interviews because this just isn't something that people typically talk about. So I appreciate y'all having me as a guest. Um, hopefully, you know, it's a lot more conversation in the near future for me um, in regards to this type of subject matter because I'm super passionate about it, man. And um, Dini, you seem like a great, you seem like a great guy. I would love to connect with you again. But we just got to keep fighting this fight, man, you know? And we got to figure out a way because eventually it's going to get to the point where it will be too late. And, you know, we'll we'll be closer to the end than we will be of being able to get a fresh start. So hopefully we figure this thing out. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. All right. And Joey Flores, where can people connect with you? I'm on Instagram at Joey Flores, uh, P-O-M and Twitter at It's Jose Florent. Uh, Dini, thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. I would love to uh, continue this conversation. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a great night. This is Coach Dini, creator and host of Vigilantes Radio Live and VP of Operations of IamBusyBone.com. I wanted to let everybody know that the My Music Block TV Awards are back and bigger than ever, celebrating six years of excellence. The MMB TVAs honor the most exceptional artists, including actors, writers, producers, dancers, musicians, and performers within the fine arts community, and is not limited to leaders in the community, such as activists, entrepreneurs, teachers, and leaders of peace. My Music Block TV started as a television show showcasing music videos, theater, live performances, and interviews in the San Francisco Bay Area and has become a pivotal part of the entertainment industry. Now an award show that honors underrated talent. Submissions are currently open to all artists, all genres, all ages, all performers. Some of last year's big winners were Jack Frost, Samantha Lavelle, Dick James, Diamond, S.A. Dreamer, and Married at First Sight, Lindsay G., just to name a few. You don't want to miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get your artistry rewarded. Your time is now. Visit linktree.com forward slash MMB awards or email grmhonors at gmail.com.